In chapter 2 we went through some basic HTML concepts and we talked about tags that are elements used to define the structure of our document. The easiest way to think of tags is as containers that wrap our content. In this lesson, I'd like to introduce some fundamental HTML tags. Let's start from a basic HTML document. And just like I showed you in the previous lesson, I'm going to use a snippet to add some basic content and a title. Now let's make some room for our content here. Let's start from the anchor tag, also known as hyperlink. So opening tag, closing tag. Go to codyhouse.com. So here is the content and then we need an href attribute as well. Uh, the anchor tag defines a connection, a connection to a web page, a resource to download or a location on the same page. The content of the anchor tag usually is a hint about the scope of the connection. While the href attribute, which stands for hyperlink reference attribute, defines the link target. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to codehouse.co, I'm going to copy the address and I'm pasting here as attribute value. So I'm saying when you click on go to codehouse.co and then, and then uh, if we refresh the page, okay, here it is, go to codehouse.co. When you click here, we are linking you to the Cody House homepage. So let's try, click, and here it is. Now, um, you notice that our link is underlined and if we go with the mouse over it, the cursor turns into a small hand. And this is a visual hint to tell us that we can click on the link to trigger an action. The next tag I'd like to talk about is the ord unordered list. Sorry, it's the unordered list element, which is a list of items. Each item also being wrapped into another tag, which is the list item. So let me show you an example. Okay, so the unordered list, so you just need to write ul inside the opening and the closing tag as usual. And then each list item goes inside a list item tag, item one. So let me copy this and let me paste this, this twice. Now let's refresh the browser. Here it is. Now an important thing to understand is that the term list is used in a very generic way. It doesn't have to be necessarily a list of text elements. Uh, just to show you an example, if we go to codyhouse.co and we look at the folder, you see here a list of social media icons. And in order to create this element, we used an unordered list. Now, the term unordered means that the order of the list items is not important. If the order is meaningful, you need to use an ordered list instead. So let me show you. We just need to replace, since the structure is the same, we just need to replace UL with OL. And OL stands for ordered list. Now, if we save and refresh the page, you can see how the bullets have been replaced by numbers. Next is the image tag. The image tag is used to insert an image in our document. Uh, before inserting an image, I need to have one, of course, and uh, I need to know where it is. Now, if you download the project files, you'll find there a JPEG image. Let me show you. Okay, inside the project files, you have an image-01.jpg image. Now, let me show you how to display this image in our HTML document. So I'm going to write uh, image then I need the source attribute and an alternate text attribute. So I'm inserting here image iPhone01.jpg and test image here. Save and let's refresh the page. Okay, so first of all, the image element doesn't need a closing tag. The reason being, it doesn't have any content other than the image itself. We're not going to use any text. Uh, inside an image tag. What it needs is a source attribute, which defines the path to the image source file, thus answering the question, what is this file? 
Notice that we used a relative path here, relative to the HTML file I'm working with. Now, since the image file is in the same folder of the HTML file, the path to the file is simply the file name, including the extension. But if I create a folder here, let's create a folder, let's call it EMG, and I move the image inside this folder. Now let's go back to the browser and let's refresh. Since I didn't, I didn't update the path, um, I can see that the image is no longer visible, while we see the alternate text. So the alternate text value is used for accessibility. It's not visible unless the image is not rendered by the browser, in which case it's going to replace uh, the image. Now, to display the image correctly, I need to update my relative path to emg forward slash and then image hyphen 01 dot jpeg. Let's save and refresh the browser. So what I'm saying here is look for a folder titled emg inside on the same level of my index.html file. And then inside that folder, find the image iPhone 01 point JPEG file and show it. So we use the forward slash to move between folders. Now, um, I'm, I'm using a JPEG image, but obviously on the web, you can use uh, other formats as well. You can use PNG, uh, GIF and uh, SVG and other formats as well. Okay, so to recap. In the, this lesson, we have introduced some HTML tags. Also, we discovered that the closing tags are not always required. There are other important tags to discuss about. However, before diving into more complex HTML structures, I'd like to explain some uh, CSS basic con concepts in the next lesson. HTML and CSS are deeply intertwined and studying them in parallel will pave the way to a better understanding of both of them. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching.